Today is the fourth Sunday after Epiphany. We commemorate St. Francis de Sales in today's Mass at our credo, and there's also Gloria in today's Mass. Next Sunday, we, we, get, we, we begin Septuagesima. Please note the Mass schedule for the coming week. No Mass on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Uh, mass at 8 o'clock. On Thursday, Mass will be at 9 o'clock. I don't do it very often. But uh, the Feast of Purification is blessed with candles, and it can be a procession. I presume it's going to be bad weather. We'll process around the church inside. So Mass on Thursday, Feast of Purification, February 2nd, Mass at 9 o'clock. Also, also, please note the other announcements um, and schedule that in the bulletin. The epistle appointed for today's Mass is taken the epistle of St. Paul to the Romans, chapter 12, 13, verses 8 through 10. Brethren, owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth his neighbor hath fulfilled the law. For thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is comprised in this word, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The love of our neighbor worketh no evil. Love, therefore, is the fulfilling of the law. The Gospel appointed for today's Mass. <clears throat> it's taken the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 8. Verses 23 through 27. At that time, when Jesus entered into the boat, his disciples followed him. And behold, a great tempest arose in the sea, so that the boat was covered with waves. And he was asleep, and his disciples came to him and awaked him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And Jesus saith to them, Why are ye f you fearful, O ye of little faith? Then rising up, he, he commanded the winds <clears throat> and the sea. And there came a great calm, and the men wondered, saying, What manner of man is this, that the winds and the sea obey him? Thus far the words of today's Holy Gospel. And behold, a great tempest arose in the sea, so that the boat was covered with waves, and he was asleep. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <coughs> This little bit, a short gospel I read in today's Mass, uh, th that occurred about two years uh, into our Lord's public life. He began his public life at the marriage feast of Cana, performed his first miracle, and from that point until he was crucified was right around three years. Uh, what we see is that the multitudes had followed him. They assembled there at Lake Genezareth, or I think it's called, referred to as oftentimes the Sea of Galilee, or Lake Tiberius, but regardless, uh, that lake uh, was about 15, they said about 15, at that time it was about 15 miles long and about half that distance wide. But our Lord, uh, the people came there following him, so our Lord went on the boat, and I believe, if I re recall right, is that at, at that point he asked St. Peter to, to, go out and to, uh, to go away from the shore a little bit, he began preaching to the people, and our Lord entered the boat, and um, he is giving them the parables, uh, the various parables that he was teaching them from. And then he asked the disciples to, to set out to sea, and I believe he went over, over to the opposite shore, about seven miles. And so, of course, they did as he commanded. While he's crossing the, bow, uh, crossing the lake, a, a scripture says, a great tempest arose in the sea, so that the boat was covered with waves. And so, while doing this, well, well, let's just put it this way. We ourselves know what it can be. We've heard oh, last year, a few years ago, anyway, there's a, uh, the storms that you see, the hurricanes so, so forth that are on the East Coast. You see how bad it can be uh, and destructive. And certainly out in the ocean, it's even worse yet. I, I, one can only guess how bad it can get. But this tempest, this tempest can be interpreted as uh, indicative of the Tempest that uh, assailed the church over the time of persecutions, uh, persecutions uh, that the church had to endure. In fact, if we look at it, the church was barely established, uh, and our enemies rose up against our Lord even while he was alive. Uh, and they began attacking our Lord, the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and so forth. Uh, the enemies ro rose up almost on all sides. And after our Lord's resurrection, ascension into heaven, first it was the Jews that persecuted and put the apostles, the disciples to death, St. Paul being among them at first, and he himself converting 
at Damascus, and then he himself was persecuted. Uh, and then the Gentiles, who for 300 years, and particularly under the Emperor Nero, Nero persecuted the church and put to death millions. On some accounts, they say close to 30 million, almost as bad as the persecution that took place in China and Russia over 100 years ago, where China killed, martyred, killed uh, communists, like close to, I believe, 60 million. And uh, Russia was close to, I believe, 20 million were put to death. Uh, the church has survived all these various persecutions of one time or another. Uh, and uh, we hear, now I will hear, people tell me, this as well, I, I just, they, they, they lament the persecution that take place. Well, if there's a persecution, that's par and parcel of being a Catholic. The world, the devil himself swore, the devil himself swore to, uh, he was an enemy, a sworn enemy of Almighty God, and he got his followers, and they will attack and try to destroy the church. And even though the times have changed, the persecution has not changed. The attacks were from the outside. They're always from the enemy. The attacks have been from the inside. St. Paul been within her own ranks. St. Paul makes reference to that about false teachers. Uh, heretics, those who apostatized from the church, uh, they all have a great hatred. They have a great hatred of the church. And the church is being persecuted in our own day. Not physically, they're not putting us to the guillotine, they're not putting us to the axe, they're not executing us, they're not, we don't have the Colosseums uh, where we're being thrown to the lions. But nevertheless, there's still a persecution and they're trying to not just shut, only shut the faith down, but try to bring about a loss of faith among the faithful. And re recall what, what scripture tells us, blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, our Lord said, and when they shall speak all that is evil against you, he said, for my sake. And what did he say? He said, be glad and rejoice, for your reward is very great in heaven. So. That's what we must be aware of. We should also, aside from the attacks from those who hate the church, the devil himself, Lucifer, we should be watchful likewise that we don't have this false complacency within ourselves because we can become our own worst enemy and bring about our own destruction without any outside influence and we can lose the faith. So really it's no wonder that our, that our Lord foretold that his church would suffer persecutions. In fact, persecutions have, is a very, has characterized the Catholic Church uh, as the true, found, true church found by Christ. If the world were to declare a friendship with the church, then I'd, she'd be ceased to be the bride of Christ. If the church would declare this friendship with the world, it would, no longer, it would no longer be the bride of Christ. And we see this in our own day and age. And in as much as we know that we're being persecuted, then we know that we're in the right church. We need to be reminded, I think, of the sufferings, the tribulations, the trials, the tempests, uh, that many Catholics have endured. St. Timothy says this, he says, all who, who live godly in Christ Jesus shall, shall suffer persecution. We only need to look at the lives of the saints. We go back in history, we see how bitterly the Jews hated St. Paul after his conversion to, to Catholicism. They hunted him from place to place. They whipped him. They stoned him. They cast him into prison, falsely accused him, and eventually they beheaded him. But going back to the, to the gospel today, it says his disciples came to him and awaked him saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And remember the very first thing our Lord said, he says, why are you fearful, ye of little faith? 
Our Lord rebuked them, rebuked them. They seen the miracles that our Lord performed, starting with the marriage feast of Cana, the, the miracle of the water being changed into wine. He saw the dead rise. He saw the lepers cured and all the other miracles that our Lord performed that proclaimed him to be God. And if our Lord rebuked the disciples, how much more should we be rebuked? It applies to us as well. Because Catholics, we as Catholics know these things. We may not have seen them, but we have read of them. We know this. The Gospel remarks, as its conclusion today, of the miracle of the calming of the sea, the lake, and his disciples, they said within the, among themselves, says, what manner of this is this, what manner of man is this, that the winds and the sea obey him? Well, we know that answer. And if we have this tempest around us, we have the persecutions, we have uh, the world as is today, who is, which is un-Catholic, is very pagan, uh, we have no reason to be astonished. For we know and we believe that our Lord is the Son of God, is God, is truly God. And it, it is no effort on our Lord's part to calm the tempest. And so if we should be in dire straits today, let's, what we should do, let us, let's just adore him with the most profound veneration in all humility and obedience, subject ourselves in all things to his holy will. And if God visits us with tribulations and sufferings, allows us to be tempted, let us pray to him with confidence. And this tempest, this storm of life that we live in, let's continually re recommend ourselves to his protection and we shall safely pass through this veil of tears. May God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.